let's start with our little interview. I'm very happy that you take time to talk to me um, um, because there are a lot of things I would like to talk about. I would like to talk about your series, of course. Uh, but first of all, how are you? I'm great. Yeah? I'm actually phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Because on, on 6th of March, there will be a new series on uh, ZDF, which is called Der Schwarm. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to, to tell me something about it? What is I it do. about? So the swarm is about a group of scientists uh, who discover that there's something going on in the uh, waters of the world and in the environment of the world. And so yeah. we set out to um, to solve the problem and to well, effectively save the planet from, from uh, impending doom. Do you remember how you reacted when they offered you your role, your character? Actually, I do remember because I was I was filming another TV show in Sweden. Uh -huh. uh, okay. And, and I got the email like during my lunch break. I was just, I just ran up to my to my dressing room and I uh, to my to my uh, trailer and I was in there having lunch and then I just opened my, opened my email and just screamed right out. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> How did this happen? Because I did the audition for the TV show in that same trailer just a few days earlier. Ah, okay. I was shooting all the time, so I was like, I audition, I get. But the project was so good, and the, the the material was so good, so I told my agent, I was like, no, you know what? I'll I'll do it in my trailer, uh, <laughs> just to because it's the only time I have. Um, you know, so during lunch, yeah. I I shot the audition, I shot the callback, and then yeah, cool. every, everything happened in that trailer and. and And it was, um, it was great. I mean, it was great. I mean, not only was the material fantastic, uh, the part was, was fantastic. I mean, the part was insanely good. Um, and also the benefit of working with someone like Frank Dolger. Um, I mean, obviously everybody knows about Game of Thrones and, and mm -hmm. the showrunner and producer. And so, um, so, I mean, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I think the, the, the most amazing point of the whole thing was, uh, I finished shooting that show and then I went off to Prague to shoot another show. Um, and while I was in Prague, they wanted to have a, a, a table read of uh, The Swarm. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it was COVID and everything was digital. And so we did the table read. And when the when the monitor opened up, I was in, a ho in my hotel room uh, uh, and the monitor opens up and all these different faces pop up and 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 it's pe someone's in japan there's people from from italy from spain from sweden from finland from london from like france from the entire planet was just it's the whole world and after there were the two actors from kenya the whole planet was represented in that in that table read which was i mean i've been doing this for 25 years or something like that. And, and I've never, ever, you know, I've always waited for that sort of, you open up a screen and you just see all the colors yeah. and all the accents and all the sort of, the real languages, someone spoke Japanese, nobody could understand it, but that's what the, what it is because the show is, is multilingual. That was one of the, I'd say that's one of my, one of my most amazing things. One of the yeah. most amazing moments of my career was opening up yeah. that face to Table. Yeah, that, that that would have been my next question because Der Schwarm is is it's a very international project, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very international. And how was the situation on on set? It was great. I mean, the fun thing about making movies is wherever you go. Um, you know, I just filmed it now. I shot a feature in in Kenya, mm -hmm. and wherever you go in the world, and whoever you meet, you could be in the most in the most radically different cultures. I mean, I'm from Sweden. We shot this in, in Rome and there's people from all over the world in it. And so you would think that culturally, how are we all going to get along? How are we all going to make this happen? And, 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 yeah. and you know, there's, you know, uh, just so many different cultures, so many different religions, so many different beliefs and ideas and, you know, and at the end of the day, when you bring actors and creators and producers and people making films together, we're all, we're, it's always the same people. 
it's always yeah. it's it's, it's you, you you always recognize them uh you're like you're from the same flock uh as it were it's always a very giving and generous environment it's always very um you know um uh, it's very just always a bunch of laughs um yeah and if everybody especially i believe uh the bigger the part is that you have the more more of a responsibility you have to to make sure that the set that you're on um, works and that the set is that you keep everything in that you keep the spirits up and keep keep everybody happy and and uh and i think that we all managed to do that really well <laughs> do you want to tell me something about the character you play what kind of guy is he seager you want some he is he's a uh, swedish scientist mm -hmm. um, based in norway and he's a man with a troubled past where he uh sold out to big business uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. uh and he's regretted it ever since uh it wasn't on purpose he 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 was sort of lured into a situation where it, where the result was uh, he sold out towards the scientific community versus big business. So his reputation has been tarnished. Um, he's taken a sabbat sabbatical from the school where he teaches in Norway, in Trondheim. And um, this outbreak of events that happens in, in, in the show is sort of his redemption. Uh, it's his way uh, back into the respect of his colleagues. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And, and, and respect for himself. Okay. But but if we uh, have a look at the storyline of Der Schwarm, um, do you think that it's, I don't know how to, um, do you think that it's a realistic story? Do you think that we have to be afraid that something like this could really happen sometimes? You know what I mean? Because when we think about powers that nobody has ever seen before or something like that, a lot of people think about space and so on. But Der Schwarm, <laughs> we, we have a look at the sea. Um, do you mm. think that there are a lot of things that we don't know yet and perhaps we will never know? Oh, I mean, there's more, we know more about space than we know about the sea. Uh -huh. um, there's, there's, uh, we, we haven't even, I think I heard something to the effect of 3% of, of the oceans are known, mm. which is pretty scary considering that most of the planet is ocean, right? I mean, yeah. we just inhabit like a, 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 a minority Part of a small part of the of the globe is actual mm. mainland or land, and then the rest of it is sea. And I think that uh, I think that it's highly, as far as the probability of something like this happening, I think is 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 absolute. Uh, and I think that just by sheer luck, something like this hasn't happened yet. And I draw a lot of parallels uh, watching the show. I've I've only seen, I guess you guys have also seen five episodes something you've seen a few yeah uh and what what keeps springing to mind for me is covid uh and the, the situation that we just came out of uh how something when the end of the world or when that when something happens when, when the world gets when, when we shake the world uh when we get shook up um it happens at a slow burn uh, kind of like when covid sort of crept crept up on us. You heard yeah. something about a whisper, something about a virus somewhere in Asia, somewhere this, somewhere that. And then, oh, there's one case in some little town and they, and everybody's calming. They were saying, All right, it's fine. Then the misinformation and disinformation starts where these politicians are saying, there's nothing to worry about. And these politicians are saying, we have everything to worry about. And then people start acting weirdly. They start buying toilet paper for no reason. <laughs> In Germany, Nobody, we did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just start bunk, you know, buying toilet paper. Like, that's going to happen. Um, and that's the way I see the swarm as well. It's You could see it as a the 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 creature. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but whatever is down there causing all this to happen, you could see that as a metaphor for um, human frailty. And you could see it as a metaphor for the mistakes that we make uh and knowing and unknowing uh the mistakes that we make and, and the way that we treat the environment and the way that we because that is a fact i mean the way that we treat the environment is an actual fact and the fact that we are deep sea mining right now mm. all the time yeah. and we don't know what's down there we don't know what we're sort of digging up uh, we mm. don't know the ecosystems that we're 
destroying. <laughs> But um, I think that a lot of people are looking forward for 6th of March. What what are your feelings uh, concerning this date? What what kind of actor are you? You are you just oh, I'm looking forward to to see what I did just like this or are you excited or or don't you look at your own movies? I I actually I actually never look at my own movies. Um really? and it's got it's, it's not really out of uh, pretension or anything. It's mm -hmm. it's simply because normally especially TV shows you see the first two episodes a million times because you mm. go to screenings and and you, you do do that whole that part of the job and then you so you get to see the first two over and over again but then I rarely rush home and watch the rest of it and I there are a lot of shows that I've been in that I've <laughs> that I've never seen um, features are different because if it's a feature then you travel with the film and then you get to see it over and over and over yeah again. But, and it's got nothing to do with, I'm not being, it's not being precious or anything. It's, it's really just, um, it's kind of like, um, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like a chef. Uh, I, I if, if you're a chef and you work with food all, all the time, you don't yeah. really go home and, and, and cook a big meal. I, I, a lot of chefs, they go to, they just grab a burger somewhere. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> you know okay, what I mean? Right. And so, Okay. Yeah, I, I you get tired of it. It's like I know the end. I know I read I've read the script literally hundreds of times by the time we're done, right? And I also record the script, so I listen to it all the time on my phone. And I go to bed, I put the script on in my ear and fall asleep to it every single day. So I've heard it and read it and analyzed it and researched it to death. And by the time I get to that point where we go, okay, that's a wrap, then I pretty done with it like I don't know I know how it ends there are other shows I don't know how they end I want to I want to see those shows <laughs> uh, but then then uh, one thing that I love to do uh is uh years and years later to, to ah, go okay. oh, wait, I haven't seen this I haven't seen this thing yet maybe I'll just see it and then it's more of a nostalgia thing where I go oh I remember that day we shot the thing and afterwards we went to dinner and then you know it's more of Everything like that, where I want to take a trip down memory lane, kind of like looking at, at an old photo album. <laughs> okay, okay, I've got two more questions. Uh, the first one of the two is: um, you are not only an actor, you are a director too. Um, is it hard for a director to to do the job as an actor, like in Der Schwarm? And to do you look at do you look in a different way at projects like this? Just like mm, I had, a, I would have done this, and I would have found that. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm actually I'm I've, I've directed, but actually I'm a uh, I'm an author. I, I write, so I write books. So it, more of my writing brain comes in um, when I'm. So if I'm if I'm analyzing a script, um, a lot of the time I'll like the poor director, and, and in this case, uh, uh, Frank got emails every day where I, would, I, ah, I was like, okay. oh, what if, wait, I mean, if I say this, then this means, you, and then I could say this, and then what if I change that, that word, and if I put a comma there, then, it would, you know, just all, and it's not huge, I mean, because the script is great, but it's all, it all changes once you, uh, it's not that there was anything wrong with the dialogue that I had, but once you've done all that work with, with a role, and you've done all the research, you get ideas, and, and especially as a writer, you get ideas where you go, okay, well, But what if I say, if I just add this word, then I could, you know, it could mean all this as well. Yeah, of course. Um, and then you just, you know, so I, I constantly bombard Frank with, <laughs> with <laughs> ideas and suggestions, um, uh, lines and, and pieces of dialogue and stuff okay. like that. Um, I could. Which is, <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's, I think it helps a lot. I've done, I've done, um, All the jobs that you can do on a film set. I've been, a, yeah. I've made coffee, and I've because I grew up on film sets, uh, so I've made you know everything from runner doing co making coffee for the actors to assistant director, director, writer, producer, sound guy, everything. And I think that it, all those all those different jobs give you a respect for the people who actually have those jobs uh, when you go to act where you appreciate the person in the makeup room and you appreciate all the, you appreciate the difficulty of having fresh coffee for everyone at eight o'clock mm. in the morning, five o'clock yeah. in the morning and what goes into that. And so uh, you just get a larger appreciation of, of the team effort that it takes to make a film, yeah. uh, which hopefully um, kills any sort of diva 
Ja. Any sort of diva behavior, uh, when yeah. you're young, um, yeah. which, which you could see quite often with actors. Uh, diva yeah. behavior. Mm, okay. uh, but, uh, but, I, but I have to, to ask you one question. I think we don't have a lot of time anymore. But how did uh, Frank react to your mates? Frank is fat. Frank is is the producer everybody wants to have, and yeah. the showrunner everybody would love to have. I mean, he's you send him emails, and I I always end my emails with if you if, let me know when you when you tire of my emails, or let me know when you when it's too yeah. much, right? And he always says, no, no, keep him coming. Just keep him coming. And if I like the idea, then we'll do it. And if 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 not, I'll tell you why I didn't like it or why it's, yeah. it's wrong for the, for the thing. And then we'll scratch it. But keep the ideas coming. That's how we, and he's extremely aware of the fact that, and that's how I think that you become the best in, in the business is, you know that the best idea wins. It's not about like, oh, this idea is mine or I wrote mm. this and I'm precious about it. It's just about like, all right, so this is what we have to work with. And whatever anybody can add, hey, <laughs> <laughs> whatever anybody can add. I love how calmly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, whatever idea he loves, uh, he'll take. Um, okay. And so it's, yeah, it's it's a collaborative effort and it it works. Cool. So he's no diva. <laughs> no, he's no diva. <laughs>